Today I'm going to talk to you about choosing the right stem for your hybrid and method feeder fishing. When I say stem, when you buy a hybrid feeder, it comes just like that. If I can eliminate some of that glare in the pack. So it comes in line. The reason they come in line is because every fishery allows in line. Some fisheries will stipulate in line only, no elastic. And if that's the case, obviously that's what you have to use. So we sell them in line, but you can buy elasticated stems in packs of two. So if you want to change from inline to elastic, you can. So first thing on, when you get your feeder, obviously if you have to fish in line, it's ready to go. All you'd need is something like a speed bead at the bottom so it's running on the line and it obviously complies with the fishery rules. But if you want to change it, say for instance, that's a 32 gram medium hybrid. If I wanted to fish a bit further out, I, I personally think that stem is a little bit short. So I'd switch it to the long inline stem. There's four options in so basically size-wise in stems, ranging right to that one. Say if I was going somewhere where I wanted to chuck a long way, but I needed obviously uh, stability in flight, I'd switch medium feeder, long stem. That long stem just makes the feeder more stable. It'll give me more distance and more accuracy. So the, there is a reason behind having different stem lengths. That said, if I was fishing very short, uh, so very close range and I might want to use a little pellet feeder just put a little inline stem in that I think that what I'm trying to get across here is to take range out of the equation small feeders small stems the only exception is and this is something I do a lot when I'm fishing places like Barston I might want to fish a very small feeder something like the 24 or 30 gram mini hybrid but I might want to fish it at range and if that's the case I'll put a long stem in it again because a long stem for me aids casting so that's a nice little intro what I'd like to talk to you about as well is elastic versus inline if I have a choice I would always use elasticated feeders the reason being the X safe system is a safe system so whereby if your main line breaks the feeder you still lose your feeder but the fish isn't going to be low uh, left towing around a potential rig that could leave it tethered. So it's a safe system, but it also gives you the quick changeability. If you can see that little clip on there, that gives you, enables you to, to quick change my feeders. The way it works, it's got a little tail rubber on there. Ping that off, so you can see that. And there's a loop under the clip. So I've got a loop in my main line. I'm not sure if you can see that. Basically, the loop goes under the clip, pulls up, tail river down, and you're fishing again. So, uh, dead simple system, but what a lot of time I'm fishing places, I might want to be fishing fast, getting a lot of bites, they tend to come in bursts. So, I'll, I'll cast out while I'm waiting for a bite, make another one, two, three, four feeders up, then literally catch a fish, obviously net it, unhook it, uh, put it in my keen net. And then rather than having to go through the process of moulding another feeder before I chuck out, I've already got one made up. So it's just a case of unclipping the one I've got, putting the loaded one on, casting it back out while I'm waiting for a bite, repeating the process. So that's one key benefit of elasticated feeders. The other one is the elastic itself. Basically, it just acts as a shock absorber when you're playing fish around the net. And as a result, I've always been a believer that I lose less fish around the net on elasticated feeders. It might be a confidence thing, because I know others think differently, but I've caught a lot of fish on hybrid fit and, and method feeders, and I just feel that bit of elastic, it's a little bit of insurance policy, and it just prevents them agonizing hook pulls just as you're about to net the fish. On the subject of elastic, you can you buy them as extras, so you buy them in packs of two, there's three different lengths. We've got long, short, and mini. That's the long black, just as a scale. There's the little mini in the white. You might notice I said white there. Two different strengths of elastic. You've got white, which is light, black, and is heavy. What I'd say is the idea is you can catch anything on black. If you're going out and out big carp, then obviously black's gonna be your choice. If you're looking at like a lot of skimmers, F1s, smaller fish with a chance of a carp, then it's white. Uh, what I'd say about the white is a lot of people are under the misconception that you can't land carp on it. You can. It will take a £10 carp, it will take a £15 carp if it comes along. I wouldn't set out fishing for £15 carp with a white light elastic, but if you were fishing somewhere whereby it was green, but you're going to hook two or three doubles, there's no problem using the white elastic in that scenario. The white's just a bit softer and it just stretches further. But for me, 
a lot of my fishing's done sort of Barston, Boddington, Larford, Specimen Lake, the bigger lakes, all my fishing's done on the, the long black stems. Uh, the reason being I can land anything on them and I'm looking at targeting big carp a lot of the time. I prefer the long stem just because it offers more elastic. Like I said, we do do three sizes in the elastic, but unless I'm fishing at very short range, say under 25 meters on a small fishery, sort of like Tunnel Barn, Lindome, Packing Turn, one of them I'll be looking at a little tiny feeder, probably a little bit bigger than that one, but small stem. Because I'm not going to chuck very far. That gives me enough elastic in the feeder and it's fine. I mean, to change the elastic, all you have to do, push hole in the feeder, push the stem out, push it back through, just line it up, make sure the collar sits right, and it's back on. It's, just, it's as quick as that. I mean, like I said, I do prefer elastic, but some fisheries do stipulate in line. One other thing I mentioned, I always go for the speed stems. We're talking elastic now, because in, what you can do with an inline stem is pretty limited. Uh, with elasticated stems, there's more options in the elastics, etc. I also like the the speed bead at the bottom. The speed bead was designed, these are called speed stems, it happens, was designed to quick change your hook length. And it works brilliant for that. But what I like about it is, if I just undo this one, you can see, if I just pull that up a bit higher, it's like a hook on the end. You see that there? Hook on the end. Basically, you've got a loop in your end of your hook length. Like I'm using four, I'll be using a four inch hook length, say. Let's get the loop out a bit further so it's easy to go on. It, and what I like about the speed stems is the extra, if you can see that, the extra bit of movement it gives. If you can see that, it's literally like loads of different pivot points. If you're fixing your uh, hook limp to the feeder so so it's, it can't pivot as your pellets start to break down so that's your hook bait in there as your pellets start to break down because the hook length is fixed here and mono is quite stiff particularly if you're fishing like for bigger car you might be using 017 019 your hook limp bait goes like that and flicks over there with a speed stem because it's in a loop there's no pressure for it to to straighten itself so to speak so your hook bait pretty much stays right in amongst the loose off loose off rings which is, of course, is exactly where you want it. So that is pretty much everything covered, I think, as far as stems go. Like I say, they come in line, but you can change them uh, to elastic. So that's it. I hope it's been quite helpful, and hopefully I'll see you on the bank at some point.